Short Track Friday. Um, races are always fun when you don't really have expectations. <laughs> and I don't mean to say that in like a pessimistic way. I just hadn't done any VO2 training and I know it was gonna be full gas from the start for only 20 minutes and that's just an effort that I was not used to. So there was no pressure. I was just enjoying it. The course was super fun. Okie dokie. Look good out there. Yeah, so went out there and did the best I could and got pulled really, really early on. One minute to go. We go 15 seconds. Short track in the US Cup. Healing women are about ready to go. Go! I think I did. How do you know how many laps I did? Probably like three or four laps. Yeah, that was that was. They upsetting. pulled you a little early. They did. Um, I think I was right on the cusp. I was the first one to get pulled, so I could have snuck in if I, if I had been going just a, a smidge harder. Um, being used to much longer events, I think I have an innate sense of pacing, <laughs> so that's not an event that you want to pace for. And left this place absolutely disheveled. Only oh, XEO on Sunday. Yeah. <sighs> I don't really want to talk about this one, but you kind of got to take the good with the bad, the bad with the good. It was weird. <laughs> After uh, being exposed to that level of intensity on Friday, I didn't really know what to expect. It was just like this weird floaty feeling of there's no pressure, there's no expectations, but I still want to do really well, but I'm going up against the best of the best and not even like, you know, the elite pro level. It's like a different level of pro. That was extremely intimidating, very overwhelming, but it was the first one and it was a heck of a one <laughs> for the first one. It was hard to get into this race mindset when I didn't think I would be competitive anyway. Intimidating to go against women that have done this since they were kids, essentially, and I'm still getting the feel for it. Um, so I tried to do what was right for me on the warm up, and I know that it takes me a little while to warm up my skills, so I don't need to just do a warm up on the trainer. I feel like to give my best performance, I need to warm up on single track, and that's not something that's normally done when you're at that level like they're warming up on the trainer really nervous to get on track but i knew that there was this short section that's just nerve wracking <laughs> how was it i could sneak on to uh do this climb do this really fast burmy descent um technical descent and that was just going to make me feel better going into it but there was a lot of butterflies race nerves which i normally don't get i normally get nervous but not like i don't know any pre-race yeah. words yeah. As Jeremy said, you just gotta pedal hard for six laps. Don't break too often. Yeah. Don't get pulled. Yeah. Elbows. Carry speed. Oh. Elbows. <laughs> Looking back now at the numbers, definitely burned a few matches on the warm up, which is not something you wanna do. Yeah, like I said, just a weird feeling going up on the start. Like I didn't even feel like I was in this race mindset, which is probably not a good thing and something to work on. Of course, no points or anything, so I'm last, but the field wasn't that big, so being last row wasn't that big of a deal and immediately I get into a pretty good position like into the hole shot like four or five from the back which off the line I was probably last so heading into the single track with five or so behind me I was like I was happy with that and I just didn't have the power to sustain that position is basically what it comes down to. Some wheel rubbing going on and a good friend of mine got kind of pushed off the track at one point, experiencing all those things that come with racing and being able to, to hold myself in that position for the short time that I did. That's definitely a positive to take away from the race. But then it takes a turn. So after uh, the first lap, it was really hard. And in my Training Peaks comments, I told my coach like, look, I know that in racing, in any given race, you can feel bad, and if you stick with it, you'll come around and you'll feel better, and then you might feel bad again, and then you can feel better, and that's normally what happens, but there was no promise in this. I was feeling bad, and I was just like so far off the pace, and uh, Blaine was in the feed zone, and the next time through when I saw him, I was like, 
I'm done. And I pulled myself out of the race. Ugh. And that big DNF is just haunting. <laughs> I won't do that again because another chat with my coach, you know, he said, I don't like that you did that. Even if it's, if it's hard, unless you're physically incapable of finishing the race, you got to stick with it because there's always another opportunity to learn around the corner. You never know what's going to happen. And when you can actually see <laughs> how far ahead the race leaders are, it's just, it's hard. You know, you've got to learn to, to put that away. Definitely let the mental, the mental side of things plays a huge part in racing. Definitely let it get the better of me that day. I could have ridden their wheel down the next descent and see how they take some, some corners and stuff. So like could have learned that way. Oh, I did make a friend in the pack. Isabella was in a similar similar position as me this time last year. So she had some really good words of wisdom. So super thankful for that. Thankful for the support, thankful for coaches, thankful for Blaine. And we're just gonna keep doing this thing. Action. Low chair. Guess this is comfy. All right, what are we talking about? Short track Friday. Short track on Friday. Oh yeah. This is the elite men's short track here at the U.S. Cup presented by Armfield. Go! My second ever short track. First one was a Cactus Cup, which was also pretty terrible. So I didn't expect much going into it. Glad to have it done. I hung in there for about half the race, and then got pulled. Uh, Thankfully, short tracks are just not my deal. By then, I was like last, and then same thing. And like, it was like eight wide going into the pole shot. And it was on to Saturday the next day, full course recon. We got in a bunch of laps. Uh, spent a lot of time on the uh, last ascent, the the kind of more technical bit. Feeling comfortable after that, and then feeling ready for Sunday. The legs were open. And everything was was feeling good after kind of a rough week going into it, with uh, just being really tired and. Had a lot of fatigue from the, the previous weeks of training and racing and just hadn't really done some of the right things. But I, I was feeling actually rested and uh, ready to give it a good effort come Sunday. Sunday was kind of tough because I was uh, was in the fiends over for Caitlin, kind of working through that and helping her and just being in the sun wasn't the, the best preparation for my race. But I think once it was done, it really didn't affect me too much. Uh, on the start line, it was... It was a pretty good sized field. It was probably almost 50 guys in the field, uh, which is a really good turnout. Call up like fifth to last or whatever it was. So back row, not great, but used to that. Had a really good start, um, which is something I've been working on a lot. Um, just getting clipped in right away and then trying to move up positions early. The guy in front of me missed his pedal. Didn't gain as much as I could have, but uh, got around him quickly. Moved up really good. Was probably right in 20th going in to where the whole shot would be. So I was really happy with how I moved up, got in there. We made it through the first pinch point fine. And I was like, okay, I'm actually gonna have a clean race. Nothing's happened. And then this random corner, I next thing I know, I'm just like slamming on the brakes. And we're like, you know, I'm two feet on the ground. Guys are like cutting the course, like through the switchback, you know, everybody's yelling at them, whatever. Get going again. Probably lost like five or six spots there. And literally 10 seconds later, the next turn, the same thing happens. Huge pile up, walking, you know, running up the hill again, losing more spots. And now I'm probably like 40th, you know, so I've lost like a ton of places. I really don't know how, but we're going again. Decent little group, probably a huge gap to the front. Taking this next ascent and near the end, the guy literally in front of me blows the turn, front wheel into a bush, and then he goes over the handlebars. His bike lands on top of me, and now I'm like flying through the air and then guys are piling into the back of me, like get slammed into by three guys trying to get my bike back together and get going again. And then there goes like the rest of the guys behind me. So now I'm like second to last, almost heartbreaking because I actually had a good start, you know, but that's racing, put it back together, get going again, picked off a few guys. And then that was pretty much my position for the rest of the race, kind of held tough there. Definitely started fading some, just not being super used to a lot of these like shorter XC style efforts. Settled in and uh, made it to about an hour and uh, then that's when I got pulled. I think I was, I don't know, probably 30s. It wasn't a great result but I was happy with the effort. 
for what it was. Definitely learned a lot. The biggest takeaway for me was that a really good start, that I can have those good starts and move up. And uh, now just hoping that I can find some more fitness in some of these uh, more training here and some longer events coming up and then put it together. And maybe if I can get some good results at some point, then I can maybe have a better starting position and kind of keep that um, going into some some races later in the year. The one thing that I would complain about would be the course. It was 95% great. And then somebody had the brilliant idea of adding in a gap step up jump in the course, which does not belong in XC racing, not even this modern XC racing. I don't, I don't know why they felt it was necessary. A lot of the guys were, and girls were just like rolling this thing, which was really silly. And there were a lot of guys in, in the race that were able to clear it. Uh, but I didn't grow up on mountain bikes. I didn't have that technical skill of jumping. Um, that's just not something that I've worked on. And personally, I don't think it's something that is necessary in XC racing. Um, so I was definitely giving away a lot of time every lap there, taking the B line, not having the exit speed, losing at least 15 to 20 seconds in this one section per lap was really disappointing. I hope that they choose to not include that next year. And that's something that is just not a part of XC racing going forward. I, I don't see how that's beneficial. Being able to clear that makes you a better racer than the next guy. We'll just find better courses, I guess. We get it that the B line is supposed to be slower than the a line if you can't clear the a line it makes sense but this was this was different this is something that you see in a bike park and they have mandatory you <laughs> yeah. know full face helmet this is a double black feature not exaggerating like 25 foot gap step up it was a huge benefit if you could send the gap yeah. with your exit speed and not having to break into it there was one woman who sent it in the race Haley Batten, obviously because she's a big sender so cool i wasn't doing it i was rolling it and rolling it was definitely faster than taking the b-line i rode the b-line because i was afraid if i rolled the step up somebody clearing it behind me would you know come through and there would be a big incident which is very unsafe so again i'm giving up a lot of time in, in the name of safety which i just don't think that the race organizers had that in the forefront of their minds when they they put this feature in which again is also disappointing i know that xc racing is not supposed to be all padded and, and safe and and happy there's you know there's some crazy features at times but this is not like a rock drop or a rock garden or, you know, this root shoot or something like that. This is this is completely this is different. Send or die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not great. Gotta lose my hat for sure. Oh, yeah. Where is the <laughs> He returns. Better shoes. Not With putting, appropriate shoes. I'm not putting any of this in the vlog. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this.